This is an idea from a very ancient astrology that had disappeared. Um, the planetary joys, okay? And in this concept, I'll show you, a, I'm gonna show you a little excerpt from it. The 11th house was called the house of the good diamond and the 12th house was called the house of the bad diamond mm -hmm. or the house of the bright angel and the dark angel. But also in this system, the planets that have their joys in the 11th and 12th house are Jupiter and Saturn. Um, so again, we, most of us as astrologers, have learned that the 12th house is a Neptunian realm. Is a, we think of it as Piscean. And there is an element of, I would never take away the great dissolution of the 12th house, um, this whole idea of self-undoing, this whole idea of whatever has begun in the first house is being unraveled. It's like everything you're weaving together is unraveled in the 12th house. But this whole idea of the bad diamond, what, what is that? Where does that come from? Okay, so this is a very famous painting by Caravaggio. This is the idea, this image of the angel guiding the hand, right? Diamonds were often seen as winged beings. They're, they're deities. They're neither gods nor men. They're in between. Now, in Christian thought, this is almost always the only ones that exist like this are devils and angels, demons, all diamonds. And in fact, the gods of the ancient world were called daimones. All right, so Mercury is a daimone. Uh, Venus is a daimone. They're, they also are, but they're just of a different nature. However, the diamond, as we understand it, is something which belongs to us. It's a, like a voice that speaks to you. Up here, here she is, Joni, as, pro as promised. Okay, so Joni Mitchell. So just have a moment to look at the chart. It's an extremely watery chart. Uh, the birth date is November 7th, 1943 at 10 p.m. So, you know, we could have a little question about that. In Fort McLeod, Alberta, Canada. And uh, Joni Mitchell has the moon on the midheaven opposition Venus and Neptune. Moon in Pisces on the midheaven. Uh, trine the ascendant in Cancer and the sun conjunct Mercury in Scorpio in the fifth house. Now, uh, Joni has Mars conjunct Saturn in the 12th house. Now, I, I want you to know that um, she, she said something like, she said, bad fortune changed my life. Mm -hmm. Right? It made me a musician. Now, this is an actual quote. Bad fortune changed my life. It made me a musician. Um, one of the stories of Joni Mitchell's life, I don't know how much you know about this. There's a huge amount of amazing documentaries available online. Um, one called A Woman of Heart and Mind. And Joni when it was uh, going to art school. Okay. Uh, so one of... She wanted to be an artist. She's painted her whole life. And if you know her music, she painted the covers of all her albums um, uh, to give you an idea. And she uh, originally, when she was young, she was an athlete. She was a very, very talented runner uh, and involved in all these sports. She lived in the middle of nowhere and she would just, she said she'd want to move all the time. So all she wanted to do was draw, paint and and move and run. When she was eight years old, she got polio. Okay. And that was the end of the runner. Okay. So do you see the Saturn Mars in the 12th house? This is Mars and Gemini, fleet of foot. So one of the things that happened with Joni Mitchell is she was, you know, when people get polio, they're they may not be able to walk again. It wasn't sure she could walk again, but she certainly could not run. And not only that, but she lost, um, she lost some of the, there was a weakness in her left hand. And that weakness meant that she didn't use ordinary guitar tunings. 
she has these very strange open off key guitar tunings that are the result of her polio. And a lot of her music comes from finding because her fingers couldn't hold or wouldn't work in traditional ways. This is also from Siena, from the same place. This is done in stone, by the way. It's on the floor and the walls. Um, and this is Fortuna uh, here, uh, naked with the winds. And this is the relationship with the wise. At the top, you have uh, Sophia and Socrates, right? It's written up there, Socrates. And she's giving him, uh, recognizing him in some way. And on the other side, you have a wealthy man pouring all his jewels and gold into the sea. Okay, this is when wisdom calls you. Uh, so when, when the nature of fortune, and you'll notice again the serpents down there. You have some little snakes, mm -hmm. serpents, tur turtles, serpents. And you have people going, trying to attain wisdom. So part of the diamond, some diamonds are wisdom diamonds. And they may be Mercury ruled or Jupiter ruled, by the way. Uh, depending on the Mercury and Jupiter. As I said, the Mercury diamonds can be tricksters. Um, they can talk you into anything. <laughs> and this is, this is in fact an alchemical image, but this is how I feel about the diamond with the 12th house gunk coming to be, coming to be wrapped in that red blanket. Coming to be cleaned off, all that black gunk, all that swamp stuff, coming out to be howled in a way. And notice the star above her crown, yes. right? So this is, um, this is what I would wish for all of us, that the connection with the diamond brings up the inchoate, the unknown, the thing we can't name or speak to or hear or see, the faceless thing that's nonetheless felt inside us and embraces it okay. and takes it in her arms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.